Right, we're on. And today's guest, we've got the magical Andy McLaren. Andy, how are we, brother? Very well, James. Thanks for having me, mate. Thanks for being on here, mate. Yeah, Obviously, ex footballer. Yeah. Bit of a roller coaster. Um, but to compare to some people, man, people look at your career as a success. Winning the Scottish Cup with Dundee United. Yeah. Um, Scotland Caps. Scotland under 16 World Cup final. Yeah. Scored a penalty, I think, the only guy to score, what is it? Well, there's so many three years, I think, <laughs> who scored a penalty in the World Cup final at Scottish, so, um, <laughs> aye, it was a good start of the career, the, the rest of it, I just remember hanging my boots up there. after that, <laughs> didn't hold all the way, wasn't it? So, Castlemock boy? Yeah. Then you go back to the start, mate, so growing up in Castlemock, how was that? Aye, it was, it was an experience, no, I loved it, listen, I loved it, um, it was always plenty of day, um, as I say, there was... Loads of football pitches around about Casmo, and so um, most of my most of my time um, as a young guy was spent playing football. Um, as I said, it's it's got a reputation, uh, but listen, it's like anything. If you're fair to place and you know everybody, it's, it was fine, you know. Because I could play football, the boys kind of looked after me, uh, the older boys and stuff. Um, but no, it was listen. There was there was plenty of ups and downs. Um, growing up uh, in the late seventies, early eighties, it was a it was a bit of a mad twist, if I'm being honest. Um, so I say Thatcher had come in and, and kind of kicked the arse out of Glasgow. Kicked the arse out of Scotland, but particularly Glasgow at the time. And um, a lot of poverty, a lot of, a lot of unemployment, uh, and a lot of crime. But to me, it was normal. Um, if that's what you're used to, that's what you're used to, you know. So, um, as I say, I flitted right in. I'm a safe post for me. So, you know yourself, you grow up with the madness, it does, it becomes you, no, man. And, and it, it, it just becomes a norm, doesn't it? You know, I mean, you, 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 see, in, 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 you see things that are probably aren't they, aren't they normal, you know, but they become normalised because you see them that much violence and, and, and things like that, alcohol and, and all that. So, it, it just becomes a norm to you. Yeah. Um, that was, that, was, that was me growing up. <laughs> <laughs> when did you realise you had a, a talent or a gift that, right, fuck me, I've got something here? Because obviously, to get to a World Cup final with Scotland under 16s, playing at Hamden, and he's got beaten in the final, but yeah. it was all the papers. Yeah. They had fucking beards, and yeah. I think they were probably. Aye, aye they, were, they were saying they were older. Ah, they were a lot older, definitely. Um, I, listen, it was for a young age, listen, I probably wasn't a different fan of Mace Boys, you know, I wanted to be a. Everybody, he wanted to be a professional football player, but for a young age, I, I was, I knew it was good, you know. I always played a couple of, couple of year up. Um, my first team was me team for Casmo Clyde Boys Club. Uh, when about it was Mrs. Craig, Mister Craig took them, um, and they were great people. They just wanted to get the brains at boys off the street and give them something positive. Um, so I see, I started playing about seven, like. Um, and organised football but seven before that I was always I was always kicking a ball but you know always you just everywhere I went I had a ball um, and that's what people don't see you know they think you just get to 16 and sign professional yeah, forms yeah. you know it's, there's a lot of work isn't there before that you know to, to get to to get to the level where you're playing with Scotland that you're getting picked for Scotland uh, under under 16s um, and that was what an experience that was who was um, the manager? Craig Brown was the manager Um and Ross Murphy, but that 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 full year, I mean, obviously they knew the World Cup was coming to Scotland, so they were putting a lot into it, um, a lot into the team. They wanted the team to be prepared and obviously no let the, the country down, you know. So um, that year, I mean, it was a big year school wise for a lot of boys, not for me, um, but because a lot of them were sitting exams and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. So we'd be, maybe been Switzerland and. I mean, we were away all the time that year. We were um, we went to Switzerland and Denmark, and uh, we've got to tournaments, as I say. So we're just getting um, they were preparing us properly for for the World Cup. Um, and then when it started, well, it was, it was brilliant. You know, Pelly came for the opening ceremony. Did you meet him? Aye. So um, got to shake Pelly's hand. Um, and for a wee guy for Casmo, that was amazing. As I say, Casmo Casmo was five minutes away for. For um, Hamden, and I think after the first game, I think I'm sure, pretty sure I get the bus up the road. You know, um, you're playing the World Cup, and then you're you're walking around and getting a, getting the bus up the road. Um, but as I say, it was it was some experience. We we, we drew the first game and then get through the group stages and played Germany in the quarters up at Petodrum. We beat them uh, one 0 and then the semis was at uh, Tynecastle, 
And it was like 30,000 there. Nah, that's brilliant. 30,000, 10,000 low to it. They had, it was their golden generation. Portsmouth's golden generation. They had guys like Louis Figo, Ray Costa, all these guys that went on and had unbelievable careers. But we beat them 1-0. Um, and that was us into the final. Um, and again, the final was at Hamden. 60,000 people there. I still speak to people to this day that were, that were at that. Um, 1989. And um, as I say, we're two not up. Two not up, uh, gone well, and then they were. I remember being in the tunnel looking up at these guys. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I've, I've got a photo in my phone, I'll show you after this, June, but it's like ridiculous. You think if you're going to cheat, try and get a wee bit more subtle about it, you know what I mean? With big beards and all that, you know, you're right. I mean, I was maybe 15, I just turned 16 actually. They no, pubed you. No, no it's, it's one of them, man. You know, you're still uh, she, she got a wee bit shagging at the show. You know what I mean? And these guys, would, as I say, they were, they, they, were a lot, they were a lot more mature than us. Um, and we were two not up, and then physically they were stronger than us. So back to two each, went to penalties. And I think I was the first one. I wasn't the first one out to take my penalty, but I was the first one that said, Aye, I'll take one. Because um, as I say, that's. I practiced for years, uh -huh. you know, and even as a wee guy, we used to get into Hamden during the summer, and the, the, the gates would be open, so we would sneak in, um, and we'd go in and run about a park and all that. And, um, so I'd always, I'd always dreamed about playing at Hamden, and um, and today that sixteen year old, and um, I, I can't remember my man Dava there, um, and I looked up when it when it went to penalties, and I said, "I'm taking the third one," and I've seen my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding her, um, I'm heeding her horns, um, but as I say, listen, you're playing the World Cup final, that's what playing football is all about for mm -hmm. me, you know, they, they, big, they big moments, you know, mm -hmm. having, that's what you practice all the years for, that's what I did, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd took a million penalties before then, you know, me and my brother used to go to the, uh, to the school across the and we'd take penalties at each other, and I, and it was always, this is, this is, the World Cup final, or this is the Scottish Cup final, you know, mm -hmm. you're a wee guy, so, um, as I say, I've rehearsed that umpteen times, and uh, I'm glad to see that scored, put a keeper in the wrong line, <laughs> um, and then after that was, as I say, it was back up the road to Cashmo, me and, um, back to reality, me and, um, that's a great story, me and Gary Bowen, um, boy, he was a boy for Dundee, he was, he was signed with Dundee United at the time, but we were parley, I said, so, so after it, we were, going to, we were going to a party, one of the boys, um, stayed in Kirk and Tillock with Eddie Eddie Conville um, and he was having a party that night so I'm saying to Gary Gary Bowen just come back to mine so we'll get changed and then we'll, we'll head out to the party so we've got up the road all my family's in so it's mad cast my house my grannies my granddas and all that so they're all on the drink you know what I mean <laughs> um, and I've so I've we've had a couple of drinks and I'm saying to Gary Bowen right mum we we'll need to go and get a carry out so he's looking at me so there's a pub in the corner, um, it's a way now, but it was, it was some pub, it was a madhouse. Um, but I'm only 16 year old, so we're walking around, and he's like, ah, right, we'll get a carry out, and I'm saying, aye, aye. So I've just walked right into the pub, he's looking at me as if, what are you doing? Walked right in, and woman in the office, she says, how, how you doing? She's like, ah, oh, brilliant, Andy, she's like, you done well, you done brilliant today, son. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cheers, and I was like, he's a bottle of vodka and six cans, and Gary Bowen's like, is this for fucking real, you know what I mean? <laughs> you've just played an under-16 World Cup, and you're up getting a, a carry out. There was, there was no, um, <laughs> there was no of this, um, getting asked for ID in the uh -huh. days, you know, so it was, um, Gary Bowen still goes on about that this day, you know, but that was, that was the way it was, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I was drinking, I started drinking at a young age. I was drinking about 12, 13. Um, boys, I went about we a wee bit older. So, as I say, I was, that's what everybody done. You nah, know? It was a normal one. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a rite of passage, uh -huh. wasn't it? And then I see people, oh, I was peer pressure. And, oh, it was never, it was never, uh -huh. made me drink or do anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was, I was, I was a willing participant for, for day one. Did anybody ever try and take you under the wing but go, look, man, get your fucking act together. You've got massive potential here. Don't drink. It's a mugs game. Um... At that age, no, no, really, no. Um, as I say it was everybody drank, yeah. Every, well, I thought every, everybody I knew drank, mm. you know what I mean? It was west of Scotland, didn't it? We all you go to your parties with your family and your granny, granddad, everybody's up smoking in the house. Right. You would open the door, man, it's like a fucking steam right. train coming through. I mean, I, used to, I, mean? I would go out at my granny's on a Saturday, and it used to be fucking a mad house. My granny, my two grannies stayed in Park Kid, and one of them, just, one of my grannies, my mama's my, 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 my
five boys and five lasses and seeing a Saturday, the dog going early and it was fucking, you know, it was brilliant. I loved oh, it. No, but, but it was just, in that. it was carnage because there were about 30, 40 bodies in the house mm-hmm. and they'd all be drinking and, um, and that was, that was the way it was, you know, everybody, as I say, everybody I knew drank and, I mean, you've seen the problems it caused but that was, uh, it's just as if it was accepted that it was alright it was a normal life to do that that was right, the way it was you know I seen all the brothers getting through at the house at 12 I, o'clock at night people fight. fighting <laughs> and they're all fighting each other and the brothers <laughs> fighting and I was listen but I was as I say, that's the way it was. That was, you know, that was the life I Wake up in the morning, you get your wheels and sauces, ah, you get your papers. and used to go to my granny's and she always had a big pot of soup. Always had a big pot of soup. So my granny stayed right across the park, kids. So I remember even when I played, you know, obviously when I got into the first team at the night, I would go there, just walk across to and get a big plate of soup, you know. You never even got a plate, you just did a big ladle, you know what I mean, and everybody piled <laughs> in, you know what I mean. It was just one of them, you know what I mean. It was, it was brilliant, but as I say, growing up, um, Growing up in Cashmore, it was, you had to be a wee bit lively as well, and a wee bit streetwise, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but, as I say, I fitted right in it. Uh, you, you probably, would you change it? Growing up no, there? No, nah. no, listen, that's, Part of it life, made me it? a lot more, you know, listen, it gave me a lot of lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, listen, I grew up with good, good people around about me. People that maybe drank drugs, maybe got a grip with them uh, later on in life, but they were good people, you know, and um, life was, it, but, wasn't he maybe as kind to them as, oh. as other people you know and maybe end up with addictions or Aye. just maybe never t- a good start in life you know yourself I mean? mate it's easy to fall off the path ah. in, in these places and it's not that anybody's bad and it's not that I'm putting anybody yeah. down you're just surrounded with it so it becomes a yeah. norm and you think it's acceptable yeah. same you've played South did they ever get fucking bust lines or anything that showed when there was a no a big like, conspiracy well, see, after the th- that the thing is you're going up against the country, aren't you? Uh-huh. Because they've obviously got passports and all that. So they've been so, docked and that, so you think? It must have been, aye, it must have been. And FIFA, they're not hardly going to go up against the country. You, yeah, you see it about like Nigerians and Cameroons and they play under 18s, but they're 24, yeah. 25. Yeah. Aye. That has come out in the past. Aye, but it's, I think there's, there's something there, there's, a, there's something to do because th- there's been so many boys that's come out here to Nigeria and all that and telling you they're 15, 16 and they're no, they're 21, 22. <laughs> but how do you prove it? I know. You know, I know. I mean, it's, it's only later on once you get to, they're met with 28, they're really 35. Can they run? You know what I mean? Aye. So, uh, but there's, I think they do something, it's like a, a bone check or something, isn't it? They can, mm-hmm. they can do they something. Check on that shit. They can, they can I, I think clubs do that now because I think they were getting stung a lot. Who was all the boys at Scotland, Andy, that you played with? Did them kick on their careers? Uh, well, big Brian O'Neill. When I was in first team, played in Germany, played in the Premier League, we Paul Dickoff. Um, oh, I mean, Man City. Right, remember him? Um, Gary Bowling, uh, played, went to Rangers, myself, big Scott Marshall. Um, but there's loads of good boys, but for one reason or another, you know, I mean, it probably happens in every other country, you know what I mean? Because you get boys at 14, 15 who you would bet, bet your house on that they were going to be mm. football players and then two or three years later maybe they don't grow or their attitude isn't right or it can be any man, any number of reasons injuries you know what I mean a lot of a couple of the boys that I played who get bad injuries um we Tom McMullen who's a great player um he got he he done his knee and big head of convo with problems with his, his pelvis and all that so it can be any any number of reasons you know when did, some people just fall in love with the game as well you know what I mean it's because yeah. it's it's an intense you know it's um it's not easy about football play because a lot of sacrifices Aye. go to be made mm. well, for some of them. <laughs> <laughs> what age did you sign for United? I signed when I was probably about 13. I think I signed when I was, I was about 12, actually. Um, I, I signed a, a schoolboy for. Around about that time, was about, there was a lot of clubs that sign me. Um, Rangers were that sign me as well, but I went to a certain school. And at that time, allowed. well, Rangers wanted to sign me. They were changing it all, but Going to school in Casimo, fucking try to outrun 500 people every day. <laughs> <laughs> I was quick, I was not fucking quick, but um, so no, listen, my dad was a big Rangers fan, so listen, I did, I don't, I've never been caught up, no, no, half of my family are self fans and all for Rangers, so I find that that's a part of Glasgow that I don't really like, you know, there's some of the, the fake the shit, shit, shit all right. that crap, you know, because we're all, listen, everybody gets on at the best of times, don't they? And then you get one game, you one game every couple of months and it's fucking calling, you know what I mean? wants to kill each yeah. other. So when you won the Scottish Cup with Dundee United, that must have been a massive day for you. Massive, uh, brilliant. As I say, that's, 
as a kid, that's what you, that's what you dream about then, isn't it? Mm. And for me as a kid anyway, Scottish Cup final was always a massive day. Back in the 80s, because was, there wasn't much football on the tail, mm. So Scottish Cup final, it was a big day, it was a big build-up. And, um, I remember sitting, you know, a day watching it, and, um, and then to get to playing it. And saying that, I was 20 year old, I probably didn't take take as much in uh, as I should have. I remember Morris Malpass, who was a captain at the time, saying it before the game. And they take everything and no, you don't know when you were back here. Mm-hmm. I was 20 and I'm thinking, I'll be fucking playing these every year. You know that? Because that's what you like. You're no arrogant, but confident. You're, you're confident and you're, you know, fuck, I never got to play another one after that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I had took it in, but as I say, when you're 20 year old, people try and give you advice, don't you? But you know everything at 20. Ah, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. there's nobody can tell you anything, mm-hmm. you know, because you, I, I knew fucking everything and I knew nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I thought I, thought I knew everything. Um, and it's only now when you look back with a wee bit of experience and a wee older head and, um, and, and you think, aye, he was right, he was right, you know. Uh, but hindsight's a great thing, isn't it? Were you drinking that then? Aye. Partying and that before the United aye. days? Aye. Were you ever pissed before a game? No, 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 no. I, I, I never, I wouldn't drink on a Friday night. Um, I mean, if some of the stories I've heard about me have been made to be true, I would never have made it, I would mm-hmm. never have been on a photo party anyway, you know, I mean, taxi drivers are brilliant, aren't they, you know, they, <laughs> me and Charlie, I mean, some of the stories that, that have been told about us to is, I mean, we wouldn't have been, no, so, listen, what's the worst line you've heard? Like I've heard I've, I've been crawling up cast milk driving a Friday night after a game and fucking things like that. And, oh, that's push, you know what I mean? I was down the knee, you know what I mean? And I never crawled anywhere, you know. I was Handle it. Knack, I, I was taking other stuff to, so I wasn't crawling about, you know. So, I, but as, as I say, I, if, if I went up to Dundee night, I was partying. I was, I would be going out and I would come home on a Friday night or a Saturday, depending on whether you were in the reserves or the first team or that. And at that point, 89, 90, the, the rave scene kind of exploded into Glasgow, didn't it? So, me and my pals were gone to it. My pals were fucking organising some of them and, and things like that. So, I would come home and my pals would be going out, what do you do, sit in the house? I, that's what I should have done, but um, I wanted to get part with my pals and ecstasy, as I t- say, it appeared by then. So, yeah, I'd be taking that at the weekend and then going up and, It'd be Wednesday, Thursday before your heat's mm-hmm. fucking normal again, you know, your heat's fucking puggled, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, because you're partying all weekend and then you're, you you can't train properly. But, as I say, I was always really naturally fit, so mm-hmm. I could get on a Monday morning, I could do the running, I could do the training. And, um, but, as I say, I wasn't a, I wasn't a professional. Uh, dedicated. I was dedicated, you know, because I... I mean, there was time that I, I can remember, I was we were one of my few mates yesterday when we were talking about it at times that we'd been a party on a Saturday night. Like, you know, it's like a mad house party. You maybe buy it after a nightclub or if you'd been to a rave and, and you'd been in, in the house all night and then I'd be training a Sunday morning. We used to drive up to Dundee. <laughs> no so slept. No being to bed. Um, maybe two or three years had got I carry out for the way down and all that. It was just, it was mental, mm-hmm. you know. But you were only getting in for that, that alarm down. So you'd, you go up, you drive up with the you run around the park eight, nine times, and then you're going to get changed and then get back down the road. Um, but a number of occasions I've done that, but I never, no, never before a game. Mm-hmm. Like maybe a Thursday night, but never, never a night before a game. Um, do, you th- uh, do you think that was a, a loyalty towards your pals as well? But because you grew up with him and you kind of think, no, yourself, oh, he's forgot his ass, him, he's well, changed. Do you know what I mean? Aye, well, aye, but listen, I'm going to be honest, I fucking enjoyed it. Aye. See, at the start, I enjoyed getting out and getting drunk and, and having a laugh with my pals. And t- t- towards the end of my drink, there was an enjoyment. But when you're 16, 17, mm-hmm. you're a fat up where you've got a couple of quid in your pocket. Your mates are your mates, you know what I mean? It's nobody. Listen, a few of them said to me, you shouldn't be doing it. A lot of them said to me, oh, I wish if I was you, I wouldn't be doing that. But it's all down to you, isn't it? Well, I nobody was forcing it down me. Right. Nobody was forcing drink into me or oh, you know what I mean? I was I was listen, there was there was reasons why I drank as well. You know, my dad died when I was sixteen and um there was stuff happened to me as a kid and my own son was born when I was seventeen, so I had a lot going on, you know, and she ran about that time I should I probably went and get a bit of professional help, went and spoke to a psychologist, but nobody's you grow up in the west of Scotland. I was brought up not to show my feelings and my emotions. Right. So that was the way you can talk, you know what I mean? Tell nobody nothing, and you know what I mean? And 
deal with your own problems, you know. Don't don't t- don't tell anybody. So, I mean, my dad died and I was back at training, I think, about, about a week later, a week and a half later, and it was that kind of environment. You never went in and somebody said, listen, if you're struggling or that, it was just, right, that's where you're back in. It was no, mm-hmm. there was nothing like that, you know, there was no support network, there was, there was nobody to talk to about it. No, I mean, I'd, I don't know if I'd have spoke to anybody about it. It'd have been nice to Aye. to have that option, you know what I mean? And because need you just, I'm all right, I'm all right, Aye. I'm all right. And you were all right, you were fucking, you just lost your dad, Aye. you know what I mean? And, um, and then my dad died then two, two, three months later, my son was born. And I fucking didn't have a clue how to be a dad, I'm going to be honest, you know what I mean? I, I didn't know what it was doing. Um, and I didn't have that fucking father figure, mm-hmm. if it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To... To keep me right, um, especially later on, I needed somebody just to talk to me. Because my mm. mad there was four years, you know, and I was the oldest, so she had three young ones to bring up, you know what I mean? She was only 33 and left for, um, for a young family to bring up, you know? And as I say, it was fucking, if it was hard for me, it was a lot oh, harder right. for her. Do you think you covered it up well then, like the wee bit of, like, no depression, but you know what I mean, just hiding for your, your feelings and emotions Aye. and a bit of pain? Did nobody ever see the signs and go, No, because, boy, because sh- we're brilliant at it, aren't we? We're, we're the best it. actors Aye. in the world. Um, you know, because I'd, 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 if I face for a pub and I face for a house, you know, you've, you've become, you become who people want mm-hmm. you to be, you know? Um, Andy was always a laughing joke, you know, laugh, the life and soul of the party, so... Um, and that becomes trying and odd, and that becomes aye. tiring, you know, because sometimes Andy doesn't feel like fucking being it, but it's expected, you know what I mean? So, um, aye, it was hard, but as I say, fucking best, alcoholics and addicts are the best actors in the world, aren't we? Uh, we've got a face for everybody. Aye, different faces for different places, and if people look at you and they perceive you, oh, there's Andy, boy, he's always happy, mum will get him out, man, he's doing well. So that mask automatically comes on and you and start... And then you've got that life as in. well, haven't you? You're a fucker player, you know what I mean? So it's you, it's, it's, it's a one, oh, but she got to be fucking depressed about because, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Or, or, but she got to be down about, he's got the best job in the world. So nobody feels sorry if you're giving you yeah, sympathy. You don't get that, do you? Aye. Because how, how can he, you know what I mean? He's got the best job in the world and, and, and whatever, you know, so, but... You're human, and uh, you've got fucking faults and feelings. Like all get fucking else, demons you know and I mean? problems, mate. Yeah, every um, single one and, is. And I, I thought when I was young, she got a big house and plenty of, a big motor and plenty of money. And that's true. You've not got any problems. Uh-huh. You just get different problems. Uh, you know what I mean? You've uh-huh. got more money, but you just get shanty more pro- more problems. Uh-huh. You know. So, um, <laughs> I, you can, I remember being, a, as I say, I remember being a young boy and thinking, oh, if I become a fat player and get a big house and a big motor, and I remember having all that. The fucking unhappiest guy in the world, uh-huh. you know what I mean? Still battling with the demons aye. internally, and yeah, still, mm. still, um, aye, um, and drinking drugs was was my coping mechanism uh-huh. that, that helped me live with myself, you know. If I felt it was bad about myself, I went and get drunk, and it was escapism, uh-huh. you know. So that was, was it's to numb your pain, it's to make you forget. But as I say, as you got older, the more you do it, the more fuck me, it gets a hundred times worse. Well, aye, because at the start, listen, it gives you a wee honeymoon period, doesn't it? Aye. You think, oh, this is brilliant, I can use that, I can use cocaine, if I can, you know, and that, that, that sobers me up, and all that stuff, and your life's all right, and then it starts getting a wee grip of you, doesn't it, you know? And you need that one, and fucking, you, you, you get up in the morning, you're, you're, you're rattling, you want another drink, and, you, and you're away, you're arguing with your missus so you can get out of the house, and you know, all, all, the, all the stuff that yeah, comes right. with it, you know? I mean, I, I used to start fights, just so I could go out, you know what I mean? And, 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 and she would she would go to me, I know what you're trying to do, <laughs> she can't wait to, you know what I mean? But it's, hor- it's horrible when you look back now, but listen, that was the journey I had to take, you know? Mm-hmm. See if I was still doing that today then, Listen, if I was still doing it, I wouldn't be here again. Ah, you so would, 100%. That's and that's the, the majority of the people you probably grew up with, the majority I probably did. Just, listen, Do you know what I mean? Boys I grew up with that were hard drinking and using drugs. Aye, a few of them, listen, I still a few of them hanging on, but, um, but uh, that was that was a kind of environment you grew up in. It was hard mm-hmm. drinking, hard living, as I say, but a lot of the boys are dead now. And they died at young ages, 30 olds and... 40s and taking heart attacks and, and, and things like that, you know, yeah. we, you're getting to this age now where people that haven't looked after themselves, they, they start falling by the wayside, yeah. you know, I mean, there was obviously ones when you're younger, boys that get murdered and boys that put in doing long prison sentences and all that as well, you know what I mean, and I was lucky that I had football, you mm-hmm. know, because I could, I was easily, I was, yeah. I was, I was no different for any one of them, you know, 
throw you out your cell in the drugs or your, your day in the violence just to get uh, by. You can uh-huh. you can exchange for the football if you're yeah. passionate love. People love fucking harming people because no, no. it gives them that buzz, yeah. it gives them that sense of I'm in charge and yeah. they get the adrenaline pump. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like I say, you've come through it all. Yeah. Aye, you know what listen, I mean? as I say, it was, it was hard at times, you know, the an ups and downs. And, can, um, but that's life, you know. I mean, I've had a great life. I, I look back, I've had a lot of shit in my life, but I've had a lot of great stuff as well. I've been around the world with football, you know, places I never thought I'd ever see, you know, be, be Brazil and up, up, up by Christ the Redeemer and, and places like that. And just, you know, but now, as I say, it's, my life's been good. It's been ups and downs and, um, I as I say, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it, um, because it, it's made me who I'm already. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I hadn't been through all that pain, I wouldn't have done all the analysis of myself and and, and, and dig deep, dig deep, and and, and gone and uh, doing a lot of work myself, gone and seeing psychologists and, and finding out what was wrong with me and A and C and all these things, and and I was lucky. I, I get right good people. I've I've met some unbelievable people as well who showed me showed me how to love myself when I couldn't myself, you know. Just showed me a wee bit of love and and taught me. Um uh, taught me how to be a man. Because nobody'd ever my dad as I say, my dad died at sixteen, so nobody showed me. Aye. You know what I mean? You need you, you need a bit of guidance, aye. don't you? You need uh, uh, old boy you, passed, you were told that day, don't be greeting. Aye, aye, that was me. That was, that was kind of family. <laughs> my grander, my old grander. Uh, he, just, he passed away, fucking, but he was a great old guy, but he was old school. Mm-hmm. That was the way the world, you know what I mean? You don't show your feelings, your emotions, you fucking, you know what I mean? If there's anything happening, you, you, the family deals yeah, with it, it was all that kind yeah. of stuff, you know what I mean? But that was, listen, I'm, I'm not saying it was, that was the way they were, mm-hmm. you know? So I'm not, I'm, not, mm-hmm. fucking, I'm not having a go, you know, that, was no, the, no, that I, was the way it was in the days, you know? With, nowadays... People are a lot more open, and if they've got problems, they're a lot more likely to open up because because you think like this, because you things you, uh-huh. you know things like this, and people are uh-huh. because everybody is fucking struggling. Oh, I you know, know you're in, in, in some way, you know, it mm-hmm. might not be, you know, but everybody's got their own mm-hmm. wee battles, and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if you're the richest guy in the world or the poorest guy. Mm-hmm. You've all got your you've all uh, got your faults and your feelings, and your way. Feeling, but that's why the suicide rate is so high, and I speak yeah. about it nearly every week. Men, 75% of them keep yep. doing it. It's because they don't speak to her about their no, feelings and emotions. No. We suppress everything until yep. we get a certain age. We're fucked. And We're mentally know, fucked. And, and, and it and takes years to unravel that again and find out who you are. Do you know what I mean? don't know how to talk as well. Mm-hmm. You know, because, I said, you know what it's like? You get into a pub. Imagine getting into she, pubs we drink and you mm-hmm. get into a pub and she oh, I'm not feeling very good today. Fuck up. Get mm-hmm. a drink in you. Get a line, didn't you? Ah, yeah, mm-hmm. that was advice you'd get. Mm-hmm. You know, because people didn't want you to talk mm-hmm. about stuff like mm-hmm. that, did they? Because mm-hmm. everybody was. We were all in the pub, kid, and we've got a fucking great life, right. but... Oh, dancing, listening to each other, never greeting and then, them. And then the fucking phone goes, and uh-huh. I'm not here, you know, uh-huh. that, was, that was the pub it was, honestly. Getting out the letterboats and the blind aye, shot. Aye, you know, Fear. so every, everybody, everybody had it, you know, even even the, the hardest guys in the place, that was what drove them, it was fear, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, if you say that to them, they'd say, I'm no fear for anybody, but it was a fear, you know, no, aye, I mean, that's a fear. barrier to, yeah. don't come near me, yeah. so I'll be the loudest, angriest guy aye. in the room, so yeah. I'm not going to come near but me. fear drives them, you know, because I spoke to a guy who was bonkers, and, and that was what he says, he says, I didn't know, he says, I was scared of everything, he says, but I wasn't scared of nothing, you know what I mean, it's, <laughs> but that's, aye, that's, that's the way it is, it's aye. Just, that's uh-huh. fucking mental, mm-hmm. but, um, when was the turning point for you then, Andy? When did you eventually go, I need I need to seek help. I need fucking to go and speak to somebody because my head's fried. Um, well, failing the drug test at Reading. Um, I, I, I did nine years at the United United. First few years flying, 2021. I was getting linked to it. Celtic by a million pounds for me. Um, it was odd teams in English Premiership and all that trying to get me. But as I say, the longer I stayed, the more my drinking was progressing, my drug taking was progressing. Um, and the big move never appeared, never, never happened. Um, it's my fault, you know. Uh, well, team, teams get wind of you. Aye, party and that. Aye, aye, definitely. Because that was Scottish football's a village. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows. Um, but around about twenty twenty one, that was when I was, I was still partying, but I wasn't partying as much. You know what I mean? And I was younger, and I could, I was going to Saturday. And, and then maybe you get a Sunday, and then you maybe about during the week one, once or twice, you know. But when you're young, you can get up in the morning, you can go train, you can train hard, you can do all that, you know. But my drinking get me, and there was there was a part of me that was 
because I, I didn't the United. I was one of the longest seven players, and I was the lowest paid. You know, so it was a bit of oh, fuck this, you know, because taking the cunt at yeah, but I because I'd signed one of these fucking mad eight year contracts I had in the days and and they'd kind of stopped, but I was still on one. But they were bringing in boys and giving them, I was on about 200 quid a week, and it was boys on two grand. And, it, and it's a Saturday night, and we need you to do this. And I'm like, fucking, he's, he's the one who's on the big money. So you be asking him to do it. So there was a wee bit of resentment uh, to the way I've been treated at the club, I think. Um, and I kind of, I fucked it off, you know what I mean? I just thought, They've treated me like shit, you know what I mean? They've knocked back a million pounds, and uh, and that, that wasn't that I should have, I should have took, but... Uh, Is that your loyalty for them? Well, they never showed... They, they showed me loyalty, but... They, listen, see if you're doing the same job as some other guy and he's getting ten times what you're getting, how you just... You know oh, what I mean? It's, that's, so right. that was... That was a, and it was, oh, come on, Andy, we need you. We need you. Um, and by that point, I'm thinking, fuck off, you know what I mean? You're fucking, but we Paul Storrup came in and... And he spoke to me and he says, listen, he says, I've seen what you've got and it's a, it's a disgrace and I want you to get, get you back. And I'm like, listen, I want away. I just wanted away by that point and I signed with Redden. And I was, I went down to Redden to get away from you. I, I thought I was running away. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was trying to run away from me. You know what I mean? That was the first thing that okay, I took with me, you know. I, I remember going down and getting a flight down to Redden and... Um, on the flight and talk to myself and right, that's a great opportunity to get down there and get yourself fit and fucking stay out of the booze and half other stuff and and you'll rip this league up and then you'll get a move and, and and that was that was my thinking. Um, but my actions were totally different. I was down there about a week and fucking I was way worse because I was in a hotel. They put me in a hotel. I was in a hotel myself. Um, and it was just fucking it was bedlam. You, you know? claustrophobic, that Andy? Did you get missed back came home sick? Aye. I mean, I was, she, she's a young kid as well, moving out to Dundee, that was, that was hard, 16 year old, and you move away, I'd just turned 16, and you were up there all week, it was, it was hard, you know, I mean, people should laugh, you, like, you were missing Casmo, I was, you know, I was missing my family, I was missing my pals, just, you get here after training, you just, see if you're back, if you're down the road, you can go, go and see your pals, or days, you know what I mean, up there, you, were, you get back to your digs, and you just, well, you're back, it was, it was a good bunch, right enough. There was a crack. It, it, there was loads that were on the same boat, so we all kind of looked. They called us a new breed up there. We were all fucking wild, you know. I mean, it was all boys said Les and Big Dunk Ferguson and all that. And we used to just. He's a big fucking nutcase. We yeah, used to just do mad things, you know. We'd all get in the changing room and the boot room and we'd just fucking turn the lights off and just bark each other. It was just <laughs> make up that game. Just to pass the time, you know what I mean? It was just. Because we were bored and um, and then we'd have nights out. We'd have, one of the boys had a flat and we'd go down and it was all days of fucking, it was a Sega Mega Drive, that's how long ago it was. And we'd go down there and we'd have tournaments and we'd get drunk and have a laugh. And So it was brilliant. It was, and it was, the boys were all great, but we were on the same boat, you know what I mean? Um, and then, um, as I say, I went, to, I went to Redden when I was 25 and um, it was fucking, as I say, it was Bedlam. Bedlam, just drinking. It was Redden. 20 minutes for London, so I had a couple of mates in London, so I'd nip in there and, um, and as I say, I was, I was doing it about 10 months, failed a drug test. I remember being on the training ground and the, the drug testers coming on and um, saying to one of the boys, who's that? He says, the drug testers. Shut myself, you know, because I know what I'd been doing the night before and I knew if I had to pee in that boat, I knew, I knew the consequences. And by that time, my old man was about 10 years dead. Um, and I used to talk to him just when I was in trouble. Never anything good. <laughs> I was always kept with this one, Dan, I know that again. Aye. You always make me deals, mm -hmm. didn't you? Um, and I, I, I said that before I went in there, and I, be, I believe they did help me. It wasn't, that, it wasn't the answer I was looking for. I was looking to pass that. But I believe it, see if I, see if I hadn't took that drug test at that time, I don't know, I, I'd be dead today, you know, because it was, I was half the scale, you know. I was, you ever contemplate suicide, aye, A couple of times. Um, I had a couple of, Attempts at it. Um, can I lying in mate once? Um, and I was just, I was fucking sick of being sick, you know, sick of being a pest to everybody. And I'd been arguing with my missus, I took her, she was walking through in Edinburgh, and I took her through, and we were arguing the way through. And I can remember coming back, and I was in tears, I was just fucking I was tired, you know what I mean? And um, I seen a big attack, and I said, I'm going under that. And I fucking. My, my legs went twice, and my legs would, my, my arms wouldn't pull the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. 
and we went by to Telly Toby Hills it's at Livingston um, it was three big fucking mad hills and see about two weeks before that me and my two boys had been going to Langer and I was kidding them on it that's where the Telly Toby's live and all that they were young at the time and, and that's what brought me out because I seen that I thought right fucking pull in and that was when I had to go I had to go and, and deal with my past you know, I had because I'd, I'd stopped drinking then and I stopped using, but my head was fucking still puggled you know, because I was drinking and, and using for a reason, you know, and I hadn't dealt with the reason, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't went and, and dealt with that. Um, I tried to, I'd went and about three or four doctors and they were prescribed me tablets and stuff, and I'm saying, I don't, I need somebody to talk to, I need mm-hmm. some psychotic, I'll put you in a waiting list. I'm saying, fucking, I'm ready to talk myself yeah. here, you know what I mean? Um, and it, because I'd because I'd money, I was I, I I could go private, and I met this woman, and she saved my life. You know, there's no doubt about it. You know, um, it was stuff that I was never ever ever going to tell anybody. Mm-hmm. And within five minutes of meeting her, I'd opened up. I'd fucking go to all it. You know, and it, it felt as if somebody just lifted something right off me. Mm-hmm. It, it seemed that when I left her that day, on end, seen my missus, and I was fucking high as a kite. And spoke to guys and they're like, listen, just fucking make, come down, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I've got to, I have to feel fucking brilliant. Mm. Um, that shows drug. Aye. Um, and I, I had a good few sessions with her and uh, and I, that, I put that to bed, you know, mm. I just, cause I, 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 I'd been about for 20, 30 years, fucking think I'd done something wrong and I hadn't, mm. you know, I was thinking yourself. a victim and I should have done it, I was fucking six or seven year old, you know what I mean? I didn't, mm. you know, so, um, it was good that, that that kind of freed me up. Um, and then I wrote a book. I wrote a book, and then I wrote about that. And people, oh, you can't write about that. Well, fuck it. Mm. It's, I don't care what people think of me. You know, I've got people in about when they love me. You know what I mean? And see the ones that are going to judge me. I don't fucking don't care about them anyway. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, I, and I done it for. I never done it for. I, I did date for me. I done it for me, but I done it because I'd. I'd read somebody. I'd a, I'd a policy I'd never read anything about anything like that. And I read it one I read this last story one day and I last had committed suicide. And um, and I read it and I thought, that's me. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna end up the exact same as if I don't do something. So that was that was by my thinking. I I I in the book. Big Mark Reedy, who's my foul, who'd been at me for a while. Um he's wrote a few books and he always says mine was the best one. He says it was because it's about everything in it. And sure I was, cold, it's called Tormented. It was yeah. about 11, 12 years ago. Um, and at that time, it was, for me, it was just freeing me. You know, was, I mean, it, I, I'd been in the air for, for a while. And see, trying to do steps, I couldn't, I couldn't get by the fourth and fifth step because I couldn't physically write it down. I couldn't physically write down what happened to me, so... I got somebody else to do it and fucking and put it out in a book. <laughs> it's a wee bit extreme, but... That was, it worked for me. That, that was, a sense of release. Aye. Yeah. There's a worst of me, you know what I mean? Fucking, that's what you think about. That's, you know, and as I say, it was a brave thing to do, mate, to put your, your life out there and what you've went but through. Listen, I'd, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, I just done it and it was no bother. It was a spell. I, I basically blanked Big Mark for about two weeks because mm-hmm. I, I wasn't sure what I was doing. You know, I wasn't sure if it was the right idea. But once it came out, I knew... I I'm, I'm 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 glad I done it, you know. But at the time I was having, because it was you shit. What were people thinking me? You know what I mean? See, you know, I, Fuck I, I don't. You know what I mean? I don't. It was for me, um, and it was it was it was about worrying about what people was. But as I say, I've I'm past that stage now. I really, mm. I've got people running about me that love me and care about me. And, that's that's the main thing, isn't it? And this all started after the drug test at Reading. Did you think you get single handedly picked? Mm, or was it random? Well, I don't know. I think it was a bit of a bit of beef. No, I think it was a kinda um it was a kinda random but fucking test time as well, you know what I mean? Mm. Um But as I say that, it was the best thing that happened to me, uh, James, because I went then went and get help. They, they, the English PFA were absolutely magnificent. Um, were you worried about the papers and that and all the news aye and... well because I, I didn't think it was going to be that big a story mm-hmm. but, but when it broke it was fucking ridiculous it was like I mean I was I had to go to a hearing in Leeds um, just before before before, the, 
wenn ein Jude fehlt, fehlt der Drugtest, aber wenn einen oh, sieht die Reden, lass ihn am Homesack tun hier, er fand auch, it took two weeks or something for, for the Drugtest to come back. Um, and I knew that the club was trying to cut money, they trying to get people off the wage bill. So I was due, I was due a sign on fee, I was due, I was due a lot of money, I was due hundreds of thousands of pounds, but I knew if I tried to haggle, I wouldn't get, so I got about 30, I think I got about between 30 and 40 grand, I think I got about 38 grand or something, I pay off before the results come back, and then I went up the road, and I had a fucking check for 38 grand, so it was party time, you know, and see by that point, I think I was trying to fucking drink myself to death. Mm -hmm. Cause I was just drinking and, um, and just using every day. Um, and every night I'd go to bed if I went to bed and hope I didn't wake up. You know what I mean? I'd, yeah. As I said, I had a fucking beautiful wife and two kids and selfish and fucking self-centered, but mm -hmm. everything was about me, you know what I mean? Every, um, and then I went down to, as I said, to go to this hearing and they said to me, you've got five minutes to tell anybody before it, it, it leads to the press or my listen, I mean, leads. Can you just wait till I go up the road and tell my man or that face to face? No, no, story's breaking. So, by the time I left the train station and walked to the uh, the hotel and walked to the train station, it'd been on the fucking news. And I've got my man on the phone greeting, and um, so I just went and got carried out for the train up the road. Um, and for the next week, it was like first night on the six o'clock news, it was like front page of every newspaper. And, um, and for me, that was, it was a bit OTT, you know, but I was fucking, I was hiding in, I stayed in her mum's house and just hid in the room, just hid out the way for a week, you know. I remember my agent coming to see me um, and I went for some tea with him and do you know that way you can tell you're fucked by the, by the way somebody else is looking at you? <laughs> that was, because he was, I could see in his face, he's like, fuck sake, are you all right? And I'm like, you still think you're all right? And I'm like, I'm sound, he's like, Andy, it, he was in tears looking at me and I'm that's when I knew I'm in a fucking bad way here you know because I didn't I thought it was still alright um, and as I say it was but it wasn't me as well it was like my wee granny Claire's my, my, my wee sweet granny she, she used to go to chapel every Sunday and all that you know what I mean my wee reading about me in the papers you know my granddad all this stuff you know your ma, my ma my, my, my two boys, one of my oldest boys was at school. You know, imagine going to school and your fucking dad's plastered out of the paper, you know what I mean? Oh. Drug fucking junkie and uh, alcoholic and all this stuff, you know. Um, so it was all the aim it, 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 it suffered, no me, you know, because I just had it the way. Uh, I done what I fucking usually do, you know what I mean? Just when, when things come tart, I just hide it the way. Mm. Um, and then I went into the Priory. And as I say, first, first week I never hated it, I know, you know, everybody was honest and fucking telling the truth and I'm like, up. Yeah, <laughs> I go back in the room. I have fucking, I've lied and cheated for the past mm -hmm. fucking eight, nine years, you know what I mean? That was, that was what you had today to, to live the life I was living. Um, and I was withdrawn out of drinking and, and drugs and thought everybody was talking about it. Probably were because I was in the fucking newspaper, you know, at the mm -hmm. time. So, but it was, first week I never was hard and then after that, I, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, but I began to feel better and look towards the future and think, right, I, I can maybe do this, I can maybe, the first week, I'm like, I can't stop thing. It just, it was new, and they would tell me, oh, I date a time, and I'm like, oh, aye, but I had, a, I had a wedding in two months. My one of my mates was getting married, and I'm like, I can't go to his wedding and no be drinking, no be fucking taking gear, no be, you know, it was just, to me, I couldn't see me doing that, um, but I did do it. I go, I, I go to that wedding and, um, and it was just building it up, just wee steps, wee steps, Baby you know what I mean, just die, ah, yeah, that's what it was, you know what I mean, and as I say, I was, I was very, I was, not, I was lucky, but, because the people getting around about me were fucking unbelievable, mm -hmm. they were proper, they became, right, pals, you know, Merlin pals, you know, because they were, the, the things they'd done for me and just just came and every night they'd come and pick me up and take me to meetings and tell me what I was suffering from. But they were brilliant because they'd come in and talk to my missus and tell her, um, take her out for something to eat and so take my boys out. Aye, because I'd went for been out of the house all the time, he's still been out of the house all the time. Because it has a ripple effect. I know if you do that, like I say, it's your wains, it's your wife, and it's and the family. And she, and they were brilliant because she, she, she for about six months to nine months. I battled meetings all the time, and then my sponsors like, ah, right, 
cut down the means. Time we started putting a butt back into the house. Um, so there weren't, it wasn't any, like fucking go to means or anything, you know, it was. They were telling me to go to means so that I could fucking live in the real world. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because I see people now and I'm 30, 40 years sober and I've gone to eight meetings a day, eight meetings a week, and I didn't want that. I wanted to. I wanted to be able to live in the real world, mm -hmm. you know, That's without, the problem, without, without drink, you know, without. Um, and I thought that once I stopped drinking, I'd be all right. Um, and I was, but it was still, I still had to work myself, you know, I was mm -hmm. still very selfish. Um, and that's something I still work at today. Yeah, we're know? working on myself today with yeah, Andy. Yeah. How long have you been clean sober now? 16 years or something. Shake your horn for that, brother. Um, Mate, that's fucking brilliant. But as I say, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, but this is a fine example that people can change, mate. And for anybody that watches, because I know a lot of people are in the struggle, mate. We've all had fucked up past, man. Right. We've all been through a lot of shit, whether it's abuse mentally, physically, yeah. drink abuse, drug abuse, violence in prison. People can change, mate. Yeah. And while you went through all that, mate, the suicide thoughts, the abuse, the anger, the violence, you fucking change, mate. You got your shit together yeah. and you sign for Kilmarnock. Yeah. And then you end up getting a Scotland call up. Yeah. I signed with Kilmarnock and that was brilliant as well. Uh, there was about three, as I say, when I left the Priory, I didn't have a club. Hmm. Didn't have much money left. I mean, that 30, 40 grand, I think. I didn't miss that in about six, seven Were you weeks. gambling or not? No, really, no. no. I was, well, no, I was, aye. <laughs> um, as you do. <laughs> and by that point, it wasn't like going out and partying, you know. I mean, you, when you first start drinking, it's all going out, big fancy nightclubs. Aye. And came, all, all Champagne, the shade, all the buds, aye. It wasn't, see, towards the end, it wasn't like that. It was like, Fucking sat in a room yourself and fucking a big bag of gear and, and your can because you didn't want to, you didn't want to be sharing that mm -hmm. because it was it was horrible. Um and then as I say, I signed with Kamala. Um there was about four or five teams as I say, I came out of Pride and didn't think I was gonna get a club. I thought oh, maybe we need to Spirit Rangers had, had got in touch with me when I failed my drug test and said that they'd give me a they'd give me a chance. and I thought I'll, I'll maybe need to go there. A club like that, um, and then when I came out of the Priory, I was training and stuff, I was going running and trying to get myself fat again. And I went on a, I went on a, it used to be Friday sports scene or something. I went on that and just was listening. And I was looking a lot better, I was looking a lot healthier. I'd been training, I think I'd been in a wee holiday, me and the missy and the Wayne doing it, the Wayne's doing it away. And she had a wee bit of colour about me. She's listening, open to offers, and if it, it just basically a plea to give me a chance, you know what I mean? Just yeah. listen, if I drink or, or whatever, then you can, you can sack me right away. Yeah, so there was about three or four clubs got in touch and Dundee United and St. Johnson and Hibs offered me training facilities. A big out the cliche as a manager there, but just come on, it offered me a three month contract and it was getting paid right away and fucking needed money and that was the bottom line. Um, but I liked Bobby. Bobby was a guy for Easter Houston. You understood listen, that? Aye, fucking called a spade a spade, you know, there was no, no fucking about. Um, and he says, listen, he says, I know you're a good player, he says, if you're no drinking, doing the other stuff, he says, but if you, you come in, training any day and you're smelling a drink, I says, listen, that's, I says, all I want is an opportunity. He says, if I do that, I says, fucking just rip my contract up. Um, and I went there and, and I loved it. And I mean, McCoy's, McCoy's, Durant, Durant, Durant he fucking, slaughtered me the first day <laughs> but, but I wanted that you know I didn't want people I didn't want well because see before I'm no never usually nervous getting into a changing room or that I was never I was never the kind of person I was but I, that day I was before I went in there I hadn't been in a changing room for like six months and he did all this shit in the papers about me and this and that and I'm thinking fucking this is going to be hard today and I thought, how do I, how do I take the sting out of it? Because I didn't want boys to be tiptoeing about uh, me. No talking about drinking. Nah, I just fucking, you know. Um, and I was going to get a case of Budweiser and walk in and change them. <laughs> and I thought, fuck me, I better, I better not do that. I don't think that'll be doing, I don't think that'll be doing too well. So I just, I just kind of, I went in and, I was in early, just kind of get changed. And I was just on the next man, a wee and he came in. About five minutes later and just fucking killed me. Just absolutely slaughtered me. But that's what he did, as I say, and that, that kind of broke, broke down the kind of barriers, you know. And I, I kind of used that because there'd be young people at the club and I'd kind of try and talk to them, you know. There was, there was one boy who, boy was away from him and all that, and I could see he was struggling. And I used to just, I'd take him up in my house and just, he'd fucking go and play the computer with the wings and all that you know but he was a young boy and he was away from him and I could see it you know so I I used my experiences to try and help other people then you know I was um, and I, I tried to speak to the young boys about 
obviously what I'd been through because it was out there, it was, you know, that, that was a thing for me as well. I never had any, any anonymity, you know, I'd, um, I mean, you go to and it's alcoholics and honest, but I'd never had that, you know, because my mind just can totally public and in a way that was a good thing, you know. Um, I remember being at a, we were at a meeting during the nursery one day, me and a couple of the boys, and there's this old woman come up, this wee woman come up, and I know who you are, son, I know who you are. And I'm like, oh, fuck, like that. And one of my old Chris came in, and he's like, who the fuck is you then? She just went, you're the guy after Chris's advert. She thought it was a guy at Olympic. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and old Chris went to her, hi, hi, are you right? She's like, he's been going to no tell anybody because, <laughs> because he loses contact with Chris. <laughs> uh, so there's some of you women doing in there, she thinks fucking Gary Lineker's an alcoholic. Um, I think he is anyway, that <laughs> bastard. <laughs> um, but it, listen, I'd loads of laughs, you know. To, I mean, my recovery's been about a lot of laughter as well you know you just listen you're doing a fucking great and, and, and stuff you know what I mean and, um, as I say early days and I had great people running about me people that, that really took me under their wing and, and that's important uh, early days in, 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 in recovery isn't it? you know you get the right people running mm. about you um, because basically they're the ones that's going to show you how to get sober you know because you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. you know so you get the right people around about you it's fucking absolutely vital yeah, you see, know but I mean? like I say when you're a low frequency if you're taking drink and drugs you're going to be surrounded with the same people yeah. but if you start stopping yourself and progress and then doing better things yeah. in life better people yeah. come into your life yeah. see when you started going through your change and started going fuck me I'm believing in myself again did a lot of people reach out to you a lot of football players and say look Andy boy I'm fucking going down this route as well there's been a few there's been a few I wouldn't have any name names or that but there's been boy I've been and spoke to a few boys and um, and that's something that I'd really love to do I keep saying it but nobody ever fucking asked me but I'd love to get into every club in Scotland and see all the young boys and just tell them Mm -hmm. because I remember being at school and some guy coming in and talking to me about drugs and I knew more about drugs than him mm -hmm. and I was 14 you know because you know what it's like James you grow up in, you grow up in a scheme yeah. you're, you're street wise you know fucking who's doing what at that age you know and this guy came in with a suit and a case and fucking told me about drugs and I knew more so I would like and young people they're not fucking daft mm -hmm. you know see if you tell them the truth they'll, you know the the they'll know when you're bullshitting don't they you know they, you, they've all got phones mate just well, google shit now, you know what I mean saying. so I would love to get in and speak to you I'd love to get in every club in Scotland and, and, and tell the young people about the pitfalls because nobody I don't listen see if one person listens it's worth it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you know um, for anybody listening man and get uh, Andy boy involved man he's got the story to tell that, um, because listen I've been there I've, I've, I've done everything that they've done you know mm -hmm. I've, I've come through and I've played with all, you know so there's nothing there's nothing I've, I've no done. Um, and as I say, one wee bit, just using that experience, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's going to waste. Just, um, I would love to, I would love to do that. Um, Especially in the streets of Glasgow, Andy, because it's a rough city, man, it's tough. Yeah. There's nobody to look up to role models and go, I'd like, you, you look up to people, they don't really, they're not really... For the right reasons. Aye, for the right reasons. You know what I mean? If you post or cast more, you're looking up to people with the nice buzz, yeah. the big cars, but fucking for their 30 or 40 or they're dead anyway, yeah. or they're in yeah. the jail. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, and we always had role models. I mean, she growing up in Casimo, that was one thing. You always had... Cause she, even, she knew days, there always seemed to be a couple of football players. You know, so there was... Bernie Slavin used to come and take my... Bernie Slavin played with Albert Rovers at the time, and he used to come and take my school team. But I remember looking up to him. Bernie ended up going and playing with Middlesbrough and Republic of England. I had a good, great career, but at that time he was playing with Albion Rovers and I remember thinking, wow, he's playing with Albion Rovers. If he can do that, I can do it. And another boy, Drew McBride, who, who went to Man United as a kid. And, but they were a wee bit older than me, so I could look at them and think, well, if he can do it, whereas nowadays there doesn't, there's not as many, you know what I mean? There's no, football was always working class. I think it's, it's kind of getting away from that now because it's, because mm -hmm. it cost a it cost, no, no. it cost it, you know, it's, it's it's very expensive. When did you get your first Scotland call up? What age? I was twenty twenty seven. And this was after everything. This was after everything. It was like basically was that moment. It was like nearly a year to the day for I went into the priory. You know, there's no many people getting a fucking psychiatric hospital. Mm -hmm. Um and then come out and a year later they're playing for their country, you know. So that was that was amazing. Um I was in I was in my Houston school bride at the time and, and Jeremy, man, a, a guy had been, he was a guy that told me a year before that that I'd play for Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of laughed. I didn't have a club at that time. 
Ze zei, ja, I believe you play for Scotland. Oh, fucking Jimmy, I said, I'm not even got a club. <laughs> um, no, but he'd made a face with me and I did Aye. myself. Um, and he was sitting. It was amazing. Him, he used to come and take my boy to football and all that. He's a mad, mad Celtic fan. He'd come and take my boy to Dylan to, 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 to the games and stuff. And he's listening, he's a, a really good pal. Um, he became part of the family, you know what I mean? And he was sitting there and Craig Brown phoned me. Craig Brown had capped me fucking all the way up, you know. Mm. Um, and he phoned me. He was the manager. Um, and I'd been done for. People, there's people that phone you up and kid on the reporters and all that. Mm. Uh, all the players did that kid on the reporters and fucking aye, uh, and get the aye, interviews aye, after. Aye, aye. so I thought it was something to wind up <laughs> aye Andy it's Craig Brown I'm like fuck off and hung up <laughs> and then he's phoned back I'm like oh sorry Craig he's like no Andy it's just to call you up mm -hmm. from, uh, we were playing Poland in Poland um, and it was it was a time of the foot and mouth outbreak I don't know if you remember but Everywhere you went, you had to fucking step in a bucket of bleach. And when we landed in Poland, and that was that was the thing that sticks in my head. And then, as I say, the, the national anthem. I mean, I know people are a bit, but because I was starting, and, and I'm thinking back to where I came for the uh, year I, before, you mm -hmm. know, and there was Christian Daly, who I'd known for I was a kid. We grew up through it, the day and night together, you know, and it was just, it was brilliant. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to admit, I was emotional seeing the national anthem when that was on. I was, I was. I was thinking, fuck me, how did I manage to get here, you know what I mean? So, um, as I say, only only got one cap. I believe I, I should have got a lot more. Um, but listen, a lot better players than me never get any, you know? I think it's brilliant, mate, for what you've done, what you've came through yeah. and to change all that, mate, and fight. You yeah. fought it, mate, and yeah. you fucking beat it. Like I say, we're always going to be working on ourselves to the yeah. day we die, Andy. What you doing with yourself now? What you, you, you Well, did? listen, after I wrote a book, uh, I started a charity for... 10 years, mm -hmm. I finished that about, I finished with that about six months ago, just things changed and, uh, but I loved that, um, used to be out every Friday night, boys for Postal, Springburn, mm -hmm. uh, our Glasgow and we'd run leagues and stuff but uh, as I say, I'm away for that now so, um, I'm in the process of just getting out myself, just uh, I'd like to get into, as I say, I've been in a few schools and stuff, doing talks and wee things like that. the mental health stuff is, is massive I'm yeah. doing a wee bit of work with, with Big Chris Boys charity mm -hmm. as well um, Big Chris had, mm -hmm. had experienced it he's, he's, he's his brother mm -hmm. um, his brother committed suicide so it's something that's close to him so um, and, and obviously with many experiences because there's a lot of messages people just send out messages willy nilly it's, or just talk you know and mm -hmm. as if if you've got mental health problems if you just talk that's you you're going to be alright you know yeah. and that kind of makes people Listen, it's a, that's a part of it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's just, there's, there's other parts of it as well, you know, because somebody, and it's about talking to the right people as well at the right time, and and people being good listeners as well, mm -hmm. you know, because people love to talk. People, people like talking, um, and if you're, if you're, no, mm -hmm. if you're not a good listener, you know, because no, no many are good listeners either, so it's about oh, no. talking to the right person at the right time, but... I mean, as I say, because I'm I'm speaking for experience. I went and spoke to about three or four doctors, and I'll put you in a waiting list, and you put you in that, you know. So it's it's vital to to keep getting that out there. It's it's brilliant to talk, it's, but you need good listeners as well, you know. And, and no Especially people are going to judge you. Know, waiting waiting list. Uh, uh, yeah. Suicide doesn't doesn't wait. Do you know no, what I mean? that's what I'm saying. That's I want you to meet Anne Rowan. She's yeah, got the I've suicide. Um, she's wanting to meet you. I said I was going to take you. Yeah. Um, she's got the suicide. Twenty four hour center yeah. Rowan. Uh, wish off yep. so people can call wait, 24 hours a day and they've got like reiki rooms and no, all no, positive it's, stuff it's, haven it's so, so uh -huh. i mean the world's such so fast paced now as well you know uh -huh. i mean you don't get a minute you know what i mean let's go social see, media and that as well fucks weird minds see for, for me social media is a big fucking party in it you know because everybody's living this perfect life isn't yeah. it? you know it's it's all those bollocks it's smoke you know, mirrors, it's all isn't it? Fucking, for anybody in the struggle and or anybody that thinks there's no way out man what advice would you give them then just hang in Hang in and, and, and get the right people around about you, you know, see if you're in a book meetings or whatever, or you're, you're no, just see if you see somebody you like what they're doing, mm -hmm. fucking good, you know, my ass going to give it a horn, mm -hmm. you know, that's what it's about, we all help each other, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, you can't date yourself, the bottom, bottom line is, mm -hmm. people think they can, oh, I'll just stop drinking myself, I'll do this, I'll get, everybody needs a horn, everybody, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who you are in life, it doesn't matter if you're the richest guy, everybody's, Everybody at some time in their life has had somebody who's given them a wee horn somewhere. Yeah. You know, you don't get anywhere in life without, you know, if everybody, everybody needs a horn, you know, and it's, and there's nothing wrong with asking, you know, get, 
swallowed a pride or whatever, you know, and going, I go and ask for help, you know, and, um, and just try. That's how yeah. you, you're asked today. Try your best, you know what I mean? And I, listen, a lot of days my best doesn't be very good, mm -hmm. you know, but you just keep trying and keep trying and, and keep trying to do the right thing. Um, and think they get better. I mean, I'm loving proof of that, you know. I, see if you'd have told me 18 years ago or whatever when I stopped drinking that this would be my life. I probably, I was an excitement seeker. I thought I was in, but I love my life today. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've got a good wife. As I say, I've got my two boys. I do simple things, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I get pleasure at simple things, you know. Going on a wee holiday, going on a walk, you know, just... The, uh, but that's the nature of things that's the, the natural but thing but it's, it's changing your thinking mm. as well you know because I've done a shout my head you know mm. um, what, what, what it took to be a man and all mm. that because you, because you've grown up in the west of Scotland you know you're yeah. we're brought up with um, we're kind of wired right, aye, let's aye. be honest to be the bad boy and, and, and aye, to get a wee bit of respect but it's trying Rewire your brain, which you can't do. Aye, aye, but it's hard, you know, but it's, it's, because your, your brain's hardwired, isn't it? Uh -huh. You know, it's, it's trying to change things that, that are basically hardwired, isn't it? You know, because mm -hmm. you've been taught that for you've been fucking aye. young, so it's, it's hard, but it's, listen, it's, it's doable. It's, aye, it's aye, aye, anything's yeah. achievable. Well, if I, if I can fucking do it, anybody aye. can do it. That's and anybody can change their life and change their mindset, but it takes time and it takes effort aye. and it takes a bit of guts to say, fuck yeah. it, I'm changing, but you can change. And it doesn't. It doesn't happen overnight either. Mm -hmm. You know, people think, oh, just, you know, just, mm -hmm. they want things, it's, it's, it's kind of social media stuff. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants immediate, then, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't get nothing good mm -hmm. that easy. No, you know, you've got to, it's okay, a long story you've got to It's easy to make it, mate, but it's hard to maintain. Aye. Do you uh, know what I mean? And you have your ups and downs. I mean, I remember when I fucking first stopped drinking, man. I thought, it, I didn't think my, my wains had moaned, or my, my wife would moan at me, or the wains had great, or the postman had put balls through your door. Aye. That's life, Aye. you know, you still, people say, oh, fuck, I'm trying my best, you know, I'm still, mm -hmm. by the way, it's, life still happens, Aye, you know, Aye. you still get ups and downs, and still it's, it's, it's how you are, you're still fucking, people dying in your families, and, and, and things like that, you still get all that, mm -hmm. you know, but if you do the right thing, and, it's how to handle it better and look at the, look at Aye. different situations a wee bit better and a wee Aye. bit clearer and realise that bad shit's going to happen to you yeah. on a daily basis. You get people, oh, oh, I've always got shite in my life. Always, you know what I mean? But listen, we all get shite in my life. Aye. You know, it's... Do what is better. Just, just do, accept it. And, and as that. I said, see now, I mean, my wife's auntie died a couple of months ago and I was just, I was the, I was the man who came to me. Can you, can you organise that? Can you, mm -hmm. you know... And, do not you go for me? I was the last person in the world, you know. I mean, I'm the kind of reliable one now, you know. See, 20 years ago, see, fast says I was going to meet you at five o'clock. There's a fucking 50 50 chance where I was going yeah. to be there at five o'clock. See, you know, see if I'm, if I'm to be somewhere, mm -hmm. I'm reliable. I'm, you know, I, I, I know. Whereas before, my life was fucking. It's a good place to be because you don't need to lie about no. it anymore. And you're not trying to remember the lie you told, uh, you know, uh, because uh, my life was all fucking. Everything was that. Mm -hmm. And like, half the time you used to lie about things you didn't even know. It was just part of the game, wasn't it? You know, right. it's um but it's amazing, mate, for what you've came through. And like you say, mate, you've had you might not maybe not see it, I don't know where you're looking at, but you still had a great career through yep. Scotland, through Dundee United, right. even Redding probably an experience. But to go through that and change your life, like I say, if you maybe never done it, you could be dead now, you just don't know. No, so no. To, you're living proof that people can change, mate. You can make the sacrifices yeah. and you can better your life, mate. I thoroughly enjoyed your story, and, and I appreciate you coming on. No, I know you're not speaking about stuff, but no, I appreciate it, mate. Thank I you, A lot of people get stuff for that, thank mate, so fun. thank you. Cheers, guys.